today on Living Power. Every ex expression, every manifestation that you have of your gift and of your ministry must be motivated and effected by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who makes it happen. You can't make it happen. If you do try to make it happen, you will mess it up. It's all about Jesus. Live for God Studio Productions. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Uh, let me let me share our script as a scripture reading. I want to use the scripture that we're that we've been studying over the past few weeks with spiritual gifts because it applies to us as the body of Christ. Romans 12, starting with verse 4. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let's pray. Holy Father, we come before you thanking you for your, your love for us, uh, that you are so intricately involved in our lives. You care so much about us. You're so involved in even areas that we don't see and understand or know. But Father, you tell us that you watch us, that you have a watchful eye over us. So Father, I pray that you give us that sense of, of, of your love for us, and that sense of your desire for us to get the most out of life and to know life the way that you want us to know it. Father, I pray that you would use our study here in spiritual gifts and ministries to discover what it is that you want to do in our lives individually and corporately and what you want to accomplish through our lives on a day-by-day -day basis. I pray this in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Most of you, if not all of you, did your spiritual gift study. Uh, or survey over the last week. Any surprises? Shake your head, note this out. Some of you were a little surprised, weren't you? And some of you are going like, oh, I kind of suspected that. And some of you are saying, no, that can't be right. And, uh, and some of you were, were just real surprised that you were so high in some or so low in some others. And some of you just, it didn't make any sense at all. And uh, Wally and I were, were, were speaking. By the way, Wally, it's good to see you back. Wally's been dealing with some leg surgery, and he's good to have it back. Uh, Wally was saying that his, his line was, it was relatively straight across, except for encouragement, which is down, but everything else was kind of straight across. That can't be right, can it? And the answer is, yeah, sure it can. Because remember, the spiritual gifts are from the Holy Spirit. And, if the, Holy, and the Holy Spirit is the one that's developing these in your life. So he wants to use one or two primary ones. That's what the Bible teaches us. But he's developing all of them in our lives. So it doesn't matter what your primary gift is, or if you were real high in two of those, God is still developing all of those in your life. And it's, it's amazing when you look at the combination of the things that showed up. You look at the two things that you were highest in. Right, Ellen? Ellen saw two things that she was high in. She said, What? Is that possible? You know, and yeah, what a powerful combination when you see how God combines some of those gifts for his purposes. Now, I will tell you that one of the things that you have, there's more to the equation. It's not, the study isn't over. Because now, once you know what your spiritual gift is, or you think you know 
or you're moving in a direction of discovering that, then you, you have to attach that to what the Bible calls ministries. And they go hand in hand. They operate together. They cannot operate independently of each other. You can't have a spiritual gift and not have a ministry. You can't have a ministry and not have a spiritual gift. So what this passage tells us in Romans is that we're a body. We belong to each other. And our gifts are for each other, to minister to each other. And the ministry is to serve each other. So the gifts that I have aren't for my benefit. They're for your benefit. The ministries that I have aren't for my benefit. They're for your benefit. Same thing for you. Your spiritual gifts and your ministries are for the benefit of others. I mean, if you get real proud of your gift, let me tell you something. It ain't working. Because your gift isn't about you. Your gift is about them. How God wants to bless them and minister in their lives. So we're a body. We all have different functions. We're all part of each other. That's what this passage clearly says. And we all have spiritual gifts. Now, what is a gift? A spiritual gift is like a spiritual talent, if you will. It's given to you when you're born again. When you were born physically, you were given certain physical gifts. You could play the piano, you could paint, you know, whatever. You could dance. That's my gift. And uh, you, could, you have all kinds of physical gifts that you, have, that you can use. But when you're born spiritually, you're also given gifts. Those are spiritual gifts. Those are talents that God gives you when you're born spiritually. And God wants to use those to minister in and through you in the body of Christ and really in the world too. So what are the spiritual gifts? Just to kind of recap. First of all, there's prophecy, which is proclaiming the truths of God. Proclaiming the truths of God. The motivation to reveal unrighteous motives uh, or actions presenting God's truth. Second spiritual, and these are not in order of priority, by the way. This is just the way they're mentioned. The second one is serving, to bring relief, to bring relief in people's lives. The motivation to demonstrate love by meeting practical needs. It's interesting, a person who has the gift of serving is really focused on practical needs. Whereas a person who's in the gift of uh, prophecy or of teaching is focused on spiritual truths, and that's what they want to, to, to clarify and make real. But a person with the gift of serving or with the gift of mercy, is it's all very practical for them. Teaching is clarifying truth. That's the motivation to search out and validate truth defined in God's word. And encouraging is to lift up, to lift somebody up. The motivation to stimulate the faith of others somehow, some way. Then there's the gift of, of giving, which is to share, share your possessions. The motivation to entrust personal assets to others for their spiritual welfare and for the furtherance of their ministry. Then there's the gift of administration. Oh, we just read it as leading, but it's administration. That's to accomplish through order. The person who has the gift of administration is able to uh, accomplish, accomplish things and, and uh, put things together. Uh, Peggy, when we were talking earlier, she has that gift. It's it's one of her gifts. Uh, Don has that gift. It, it's It's that... Being able to put things together for the purpose of administration to make things happen. The motivation to coordinate the activities of others for the achievement of common goals. Then there's mercy. The gift of mercy is to show compassion. And that is the motivation to discern and to identify with. Identify with. That's very important. To identify with and to comfort those who are in distress. So let's talk about this. If you know or think you know what your spiritual gift is then how does God use it? That's called ministry. So you have to know not only what your spiritual gift is, but how God wants to use it. And he, he doesn't use everybody the same way. There could be several of us who have the gift of prophecy, which means proclaiming the truth, proclaiming the word. That happens to be my primary gift. But all of us have different ministries. So you could have, there could be a dozen of us in this room who have who have the gift of prophecy, the spiritual gift of prophecy, that's their primary gift. Uh, but 12 different ministries. So just because you have a particular spiritual gift doesn't mean that you are going to have a particular ministry. It doesn't work that way. All the ministries are different because God has made each of us <laughs> different. I don't know if you know this, but everybody sitting at your table is different. <laughs> and you all are made up differently. And so you operate differently. So once you've determined what your primary spiritual gift is, you need to follow through on the use of that gift. And 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 4, helps us to understand how to pinpoint the use of our gift. Here it is, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Did you get that last one? To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Now, let's break these, these, uh, these four verses down. Verse 4, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. The gifts that we're talking about are the gifts that we've been studying, the seven basic spiritual gifts, which are in Romans chapter 12. But each gift, we have to understand, is administered by the Holy Spirit. So it's not your gift, it's God's gift. We say, what's your spiritual gift? And because, But what we mean is, what gift is God working in and through your life? You don't own the gift. It wasn't given to you so that you could go sell it. It's not that, it's not that kind of a gift. The gift is God's gift. And actually, if you want to know the truth, it's God's gift through you. Your spiritual gift is what God wants to give other people through you. Verse 5 says there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. Now, the word service is diakonia. Does that sound familiar? Diakonia? How about deacon? That's where we get the word deacon from. It means ministry. It's, 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 it's the word service is diakonia, and it means a way to serve Christ and others. That's all it means. Doesn't mean that you have a, a, a position of leadership in the church just because you're a deacon. If anything, you have a position of servitude in the church. That's what a deacon does. A deacon is a servant to the, to the body of Christ. And that's his, that's his job or her job. It's, it's, it's our job as servants to minister in a way that, that, or to let God minister in a way through us that changes other people's lives. That's ministry. So each ministry then has to be under the lordship, under the leadership and the lordship of Jesus. And each ministry, get this, is an act of obedience. So it's not something that just, oh, I feel like I want to do this. I think I just, I'd really like to try that. No, it's not that at all. It's obedience to where it is that God's leading you, what it is that God wants to do in and through your life. What is it that God is opening up the door for you to do? And you're probably sitting there, some of you are going, well, I don't have any idea what that would be. Well, here's the good news. God does. And he wants to show you. He wants to reveal that to you. But you've got to be looking for it. And so now, as you grow more sensitive to it, hopefully God will begin opening those doors for you. And you'll begin to a greater sensitivity to what it is that God wants to do in your life and through your life. Verse 6 says that there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all and everyone. Now the word here, there are varieties of activities. The word activities just simply means different actions, but it actually is the word for energy. There are different energies that happen. Now there's an interesting play on words in this phrase. It's actually an intentional grammatical form. You're going to get a, a lesson here. So for those of you who are taking notes, uh, what we're talking about is called an epi 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 exegetical gen genesis. Epi ge it's, it's a thing that happens when one word is basically the same thing as another word, and they, they, they work off of each other. So, um, by the way, I, I, that tells you how smart I am. I didn't even say the word. But what the whole concept of, of this is that when, it, there's, when there is a word that is used that is meant to be the same thing as the noun it modifies. Have I totally confused you? All right, well, let me explain it. In this passage, the word for activities means energies. There are different energies. There are varieties of energies. But the word empower is almost the exact same word. So what it says, the word empowers means to energize. So in other words, there are different energies that are energized. Pretty simple when you think about it. So what this says is there are varieties of energies, but it is the same God who energizes them all in everyone. 
So your ministry has to be energized by God. It isn't energized because somebody comes along and says, well, we really need some help in this area. Could you help? The, the, the children really need your help. The children are suffering. They really need you. Can you please help us? And, and they appeal to your emotions. And they try to energize you or motivate you to go do something. That's not, that's not ministry. That's volunteerism. It's fine if you want to do that, but that's volunteerism. Ministry is when God energizes that ministry in you. You have the energy, that ministry, that energy, that, that, that activity that, that you know you, you, you could do or you want to do or you think you could or, well, you're not sure if you can, but boy, you, you really are passionate about it, you think. But it's God who energizes that opportunity. It's God who makes it happen. It's God who gives the energy for that ministry. So think of it as a way that God wants to use your gift and your ministry, which are all his gifts and his ministries, and the location that he wants to use it, and combine all of that together with all of the other believers and their gifts and their ministries. Can you see what's about to happen? When we understand that God has every person in this room has one or two primary spiritual gifts. May not know what they are yet, but the Bible teaches that. And then all of you recognize that you have a ministry, you individually have a ministry that God dictates and he wants to accomplish. And that God will energize that ministry in you. Can you imagine what God could do through this class? Can you imagine what God to do, could do through this church? I mean, we, when we begin to, we, we think that we're out here in this little island by ourselves, that how are we going to make a difference in the world? There's how you make a difference in the world. It's God who energizes it. And by the way, it's up to God to make it clear what he wants you to do and what he wants for your life. It's not up to you to go, oh, I've got to figure this out. Okay, I took that test. Okay, so I've got to go with this formula. Test is, not, the survey is just, basically kind of a formulaic type thing it's man-made it's not it, you know it didn't it didn't come straight out of the bible it uses biblical principles and terms and that and that's important but it's god who energizes and it's god who motivates it's god who promotes it's god who makes this thing come alive in your life and the point is that we all work together because we all have gifts and ministries that blend together to accomplish what it is that God wants to accomplish. And I want you to remember this key thing. There are no Lone Ranger gifts or ministries. There are no Lone Ranger gifts or ministries. Your gift is part of what God is doing in his body. Your ministry is part of what God is doing in his body. Your gift is what God is doing through this body. Your ministry is what God is doing through this body. Your gift isn't your own. Your, your, your ministry isn't your own. It's God's for his purpose, his plan. Now, here's something you really need to understand. Those of you who are still alive. Most of you. Uh, those of you who are still alive. God still has a gift and a ministry for you. The fact that you're still alive proves that God's not done with you yet. You may think he's done with you. He ain't. He is, in some cases, just getting started. One of my favorite writers in the world, Francis Schaeffer, didn't start really developing his ministry and his work until he was 74 years old. And then he changed his world. Listen, God's maybe just getting started with you, no matter how old you are. And in some cases, God's getting started in your life so that you die and somebody else picks it up and runs with it. And you lay the foundation for it. Do you see how it works? It's, it doesn't end when you die. You know, God still has something he wants to accomplish. You know, my, my father has been dead for, for many years. God's still working through him in my life. I mean, he's still an example to me. I still remember things that he taught me. I still, to this day, will think of things like, wow, I'd forgotten all about that. Something that dad did or he taught me. That's true in all of us. 
for all of us. And, and, and we leave a legacy. We build a legacy by building a foundation for ministry that God continues to use even after we're gone. So build your legacy. Build your foundation. Let God do what he wants to do in and through your life. Now, verse 7 says that to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for common good. And that expression or that manifestation, if you will, of a spiritual gift and of a ministry are the revelation of the Holy Spirit. It's what the Holy Spirit does, and it's for the good of the body. And that's why it's critical to not go out and do things on your own. Every expression, every manifestation that you have of your gift and of your ministry must be motivated and effected by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who makes it happen. You can't make it happen. If you do try to make it happen, you will mess it up. So don't do it. A good way to think of the manifestation of the Spirit is to think of it as the when and the where that God chooses to use your gift and your ministry. The when and the where that God chooses to use your gift and your ministry. Now I'm going to stop here because I don't want to get into it. We're going to start next Sunday looking at the defined ministries that are in the Bible and how God uses those and really break those down. And I don't want to get into it part ways and then stop it. So we'll pick it up next Sunday. So we'll come back and look at specific ministries that are mentioned in the Bible and how they work and how God can use your gift with a particular ministry. And hopefully you'll begin to discover your minister, ministry.